Hey guys, my name is Kenna and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be all about how certain vitamins relate to our immune system and support our immune function. We're going to talk about the term boosting your immune system and we're just going to talk about vitamin A, vitamin D and vitamin C, the roles they play, where you can get them from food sources, all of their biological functions, and then also talk about deficiency and toxicity of those vitamins as well. So if you wanna learn more about vitamins that relate to immune function and the immune system, then just keep watching. Okay, so vitamin A, you may have heard of it a lot in skincare. This is relating to red retinol, which is the alcohol form of vitamin A. We also have retinal, which is the aldehyde form. We have retinal esters, which are formed from palmitol CoA and retinol, forming a retinal ester. And then we also have carotenoids. And carotenoids basically is like pro-vitamin A. So from your diet, you could get vitamin A in the form of carotenoids from plants and then you could get ret retinal esters from different animal products including egg yolks, butter, liver, and fish oil. So the biological roles of retinol or vitamin A include night vision. That's why when you're younger, your parents might make you eat carrots and say that it's good for your eyes. This is the 11 cis retinol form that relates to this function. It also plays a big role in cell differentiation, growth, the synthesis of glycoproteins, reproduction, bone metabolism, and immune function. So if you are deficient in vitamin A, that means that you could be really low in retinoic acid, and this does make you more susceptible to gut and lung infections. And it can also lead to blindness. In addition, for pregnant women, it can lead to fetal development defects, including birth defects. Vitamin A can also cause toxicity if you are getting way too much, and this can cause liver damage and also birth defects. So it's really important to get the right amount of vitamin A from either a multivitamin or your daily food intake. Now, a high level of or excessive intake of beta carotene is considered safe, but it does cause something called hyperkeratinemia, um, which is basically where you have beta carotene being stored in your adipose tissue and your skin starts to learn a little bit orange, but it can be easily reversed by stopping the ex excess intake of beta carotene. So the recommended daily amount of vitamin A really depends on your age as well as your gender. So for males that are 14 plus, the recommended daily amount would be 900 micrograms per day of retinol. And then if you're consuming your vitamin A from beta carotene, that would be 12 times that amount because 12 micrograms of beta carotene is equivalent to one microgram of retinol in the body. For females 14 plus, the rec recommended daily amount would be 700 micrograms per day of retinol. And again, multiply that by 12 if you're intaking beta carotene. And then it also does differ for pregnant women. It's slightly higher at between 750 and 770 micrograms per day. And then during lactation, it's even more for women. It would be about 1200 to 13 micrograms per day of retinol. And then there is also these upper limits and upper limits is the amount that you absolutely do not want to pop pass. Otherwise it could cause excessive issues such as the ones I mentioned before with liver damage and birth defects. This daily amount is 3000 micrograms per day. So really important not to exceed those upper limits better just to take the recommended daily amount of vitamin A. And if you are, are taking a multivitamin that is suited to your gender and your age, then you should be totally fine with your vitamin A intake. More is definitely not better when it comes to vitamins. Okay, next we're gonna talk about the very, very popular vitamin C. Uh, vitamin C is really interesting because we cannot make it as Humans, um, also primates, bats, guinea pigs, and birds cannot make vitamin C because we lack the enzyme that can do that for us. So we have to get it from our diet solely. So vitamin C does play a really important role in our immune function and acts as a pro-oxidant, which means it can reduce transition metals. These are often used to combat things like microbes in our body and kind of kill them and destroy them using free radicals um, in a very controlled environment. 
They also can act as electron donors to reduce vitamin E radicals back to vitamin E, which again play a really important role in cell protection and defense against microbes. There's really high levels of vitamin C found in neutrophils. Neutrophils are the white blood cells that go and essentially fight infections in your body. And then as we do know in skincare, vitamin C plays a really important role in collagen production. It essentially works with this enzyme called proline hydroxylase, which is really important at building those proline units to make up collagen strands. So without vitamin C, we cannot build collagen in our bodies. Um, some other biological roles for vitamin C that are hypothesized include that it reduces the severity of colds and it is also hypothes hypothesized that it has a role in cancer treatment and prevention. And then there's really weak evidence surrounding that it does improve immune function. It acts as a antioxidant and um, it has some carcinogen detoxification effects as well. But those other biological roles that I just mentioned require stronger evidence to say that they for sure do play these roles, but there is some weak evidence to show that they could play an important role in those functions. So if you are deficient in vitamin C, it can lead to impaired collagen synthesis, ultimately resulting in loose teeth, hair loss, poor wound healing, and bleeding gums. It also leads to poor iron status, and um, bleeding will cause significant iron loss. So definitely wanna make sure that you're getting enough vitamin C in your diet. So the recommended daily amount from Health Canada for vitamin C, if you are a male, that is 19 plus, it is 90 milligrams per day. And um, if you are female 19 plus, it is 75 milligrams per day. And then if you are pregnant, again, over 19 years old, it is 85 milligrams per day. And then breastfeeding women need even more vitamin C, if they're 19 plus, it is about 120 milligrams per day. But it is really, really important that you do not exceed more than 2,000 milligrams or two grams per day, because this could lead to diarrhea, which ultimately, ultimately makes you very dehydrated, and it can also lead to kidney stones, because it causes you to have an increased excretion of oxalate and urate in your urine. So. Yes, vitamin C is very important. It plays a really important role in our immune system because it is found in very high amounts in neutrophils or white blood cells. But it's really important not to exceed two grams per day or 2000 milligrams per day. More is not better in this case because it can lead to some bad consequences in your body. Like I mentioned, diarrhea, which leads to dehydration and then kidney stones, which is requires surgery often to remove and it's just not a good thing. So I know in China they are doing studies relating to what is going on right now and vitamin C. So hopefully we will have those clinical results in the fall and we will know for sure if vitamin C is going to be an effective tool at combating what is going on right now. Okay, and last but not least, we are gonna talk about vitamin D. So vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. In Canada, it is fortified in cow milk, margarine, cheese, and yogurt. And this is the one that is actually produced by our bodies with exposure to UV radiation. It is also known as the happy vitamin because it has been found to play a big role, a big role in mood but it also has a lot of other really important bi biological roles, including maintaining your blood calcium levels, cell proliferation and cell differentiation, inflammation and immune function. So a vitamin D deficiency is really not a good thing because it does relate a lot to calcium in the body. Ultimately, a vitamin D deficiency will provide a steady drop in bone density. Now for infants, this usually translates to softened bones, bowing of the legs. In children, it means often frequent fractures, but they can, the bones can remineralize because they're still being built um, if the diet is fixed, so there's definitely some hope there. Um, throughout middle age to elderly people, it does cause, again, vitamin D deficiency does cause osteoporosis. And there are lots of risk factors for vitamin D deficiency, which include being female, smoking, low body weight, low intake of calcium, low intake of vitamin D, a sedentary lifestyle, and gastric bypass surgery. 
So vitamin D is a really important one to take in a vitamin form. Generally, a multivitamin for your age group will be absolutely perfect. It'll get you all the vitamin D that you need in a day, as well as if you are having fortified foods in Canada. The fortified foods include cow milk, margarine, cheese, and yogurt. So those all include an additional amount of vitamin D that is going to supplement your diet. So vitamin D can definitely have toxic effects if you are taking too much, but there is no risk for vitamin D toxicity just from UV radiation. So if you're just getting your vitamin D from going out in the sun, then you have nothing to worry about. But if you are supplementing with vitamin D vitamins or supplements um, and you're over supplementing, it can lead to hypercalcemia, which basically means calcification of soft tissue, which is not a good thing. It can cause lots of issues internally in your organs. So the upper limit for adults is 4,000 international units per day. Again, if you're just taking a regular multivitamin as directed, you're definitely not going to overpass this limit. Okay, so that's pretty much all I'm going to cover about vitamins. The really important things to just kind of summarize everything that I said, it's important to get the recommended daily amount of vitamins A, D, and C for normal immune function. Um, I do just want to touch on this whole idea of boosting your immune system. You can't boost your immune system. You can't make it better than it is. You really can support your immune system, provide it all the micro and macronutrients that it needs to be functioning optimally, but you can't really have a super human immune system. So just by taking the recommended daily amounts of these vitamins, a, C, and D, you're going to be supporting your immune system the best you can. With vitamins and supplements, it's really important to remember that more is not better. As I mentioned throughout this video, toxicity of any of these vitamins can lead to major health issues, and it's definitely not going to be helping your immune system to have secondary issues because you've been overtaking these vitamins and supplements. Multivitamins that are for your age group and your gender are going to have the perfect amount of everything that you need. So that is kind of my recommendation to always talk to your physician before you take any new supplementary vitamin and do not take more than any recommended amount on the bottle. I think that everyone should be taking a multivitamin as long as your physician has cleared it that it's safe for you. And this will really give you everything that you need that you may be missing from your diet just because it is really hard to get all of the vitamins that you need in a day just from eating food. So it is really good to be supplementing um, with a daily multivitamin. So I know a lot of people are wondering, okay, well, sh if they're doing all these studies on vitamin C and what's going on right now, should I be taking more vitamin C than the rec recommended daily amount? I would say not in a supplement form, not in a multivitamin form. It is important to get that recommended daily amount. And then if you wanna try and get more, add some more, fruits and vegetables into your diet that are really high in vitamin C, such as citrus fruits, uh, peppers like bell peppers, red bell peppers are really high in vitamin C, and there's a whole other ton of vitamins and fruits that are really high in vitamin C. That's a great way to get additional vitamin C into your diet and not overloading your body um, and potentially damaging your kidneys with taking too much vitamin C in a day through supplement form. All right, you guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you learned a little bit something about supplements that relate to the immune system. I love nutrition. I love learning about it. Um, I took a ton of nutrition courses back in my university years, and it's really fun to bring up all that knowledge again because I think it's really relevant right now. People are really wondering what they can do to boost their immune systems. I don't really like that term. Like I said before, I prefer supporting your immune system. That's the way I like to look at it because that's really the best we can do. But I hope you learned something useful here. I hope that this encouraged you not to overdo supplementation and vitamins because um, that can ultimately have pretty serious health consequences as well. All right, you guys, that is it for me today. I hope you are all staying healthy and safe, staying at home if you are able to. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.